Imagine staring into a mirror that doesn't just reflect light, but time itself. Not a mirror of glass, but of gold. Its surface curved and tuned so precisely that it captures the faintest whispers of creation. When you gaze into it, you don't see yourself. You don't see your room or your world. You stare into the infancy of the universe, into a time when existence was still wrapping itself around its first breath. That is what the James Webb Space Telescope was built to do. But when it looked deeper than anything before, it didn't find infancy. It didn't find silence. It found contradiction, an impossibility. For decades, the story of the universe seemed clear. First came the Big Bang, the birth of space itself. Then came darkness, hundreds of millions of years before the first stars lit the void. Matters slowly gathered, stars ignited, galaxies formed, and complexity took its time. The further back we looked, the simpler things should have become. Yet Webb shattered that narrative. Pointing its golden mirrors at a patch of sky expected to hold little more than shadows, it revealed a fully formed galaxy. Not a smear of light or scattered gas, but a structured spiral system, complete with arms, star clusters, and even a black hole at its heart. This wasn't a cosmic child. This was architectural elegance, thriving impossibly early. And it wasn't alone. Webb uncovered more, galaxies that were mature, chemically rich, alive with complexity where there should have been only chaos. How could the cosmic clock have skipped billions of years of evolution? Even more staggering were the fingerprints of light, the spectral data. These galaxies weren't made of just hydrogen and helium, as expected of such a young universe. They carried oxygen, carbon, even iron. Elements forged only in the hearts of stars and scattered by violent supernovae. That cycle should have taken eons. Yet somehow, in under 400 million years, it had already repeated more than once. The early universe wasn't crawling forward, it was sprinting, burning, exploding, and rebuilding at impossible speed. And then came the discovery that defied all reason. At the heart of one galaxy web detected a black hole. Not small, not growing, but supermassive, over a billion times the mass of our sun. To exist so soon after the Big Bang was cosmologically absurd. Some propose primordial black holes born directly from fluctuations in the newborn universe. Others whisper about exotic physics or dark matter feasts. But every explanation requires rewriting reality itself. Patterns began to emerge. These galaxies weren't scattered randomly. Their structures echoed ratios found in seashells, hurricanes, and sunflowers, the golden spiral etched across the cosmos. Coincidence? Or evidence of a hidden geometry guiding creation itself? And then Webb detected something even stranger. Not inside galaxies, not bound to planets, but drifting in the void, organic molecules. Complex ones. Carbon-rich structures that form the scaffolding of amino acids, the building blocks of life. They had survived more than 13 billion years, spread across the universe from the very beginning. Life, it seemed, wasn't a late accident. It was written into the cosmic fabric. But the most haunting image was yet to come. Webb captured six galaxies arranged in perfect symmetry, orbiting a central point like petals around a flower. Astronomers called it the flower coincidence. Gravitational lensing, maybe. Exotic turbulence, perhaps. But no model could explain its eerie precision. Some dared to wonder, was it natural? Or a message? Left waiting for the moment a species built an eye powerful enough to finally see it? And finally, the most chilling possibility. What if the very act of observing shaped the outcome? Quantum physics already hints that particles shift when measured. What if the same principle scales upward, 
What if by building web, by daring to look back, we didn't just observe the universe, we awakened it? Some web images even appeared to shift with time, patterns emerging, vanishing, as if reality itself were responding to our gaze. Perhaps we are not simply explorers of the cosmos. Perhaps we are participants, co-authors, even triggers. Because what Webb revealed wasn't just galaxies or black holes. It was truth. A truth so vast, so ancient, so alive that to witness it is to feel reality itself tremble. Galaxies too mature. Chemistry too advanced. Black holes too massive. Patterns too precise. Molecules too alive. Webb hasn't just shown us the unimaginable. It has forced us to imagine more. Maybe we didn't find the edge of the universe. Maybe we found its memory. And maybe, just maybe, it remembered us. So now the question isn't what did Webb see?